The emergency bandage, also known as the Israeli bandage, is an elasticized bandage with a non-adhesive bandage pad and pressure bar sewn in. It takes only seconds to deploy, and in an emergency, it can stop heavy bleeding, especially in places where a tourniquet can't be applied. Want to learn more about the Israeli bandage? Stick around. When dealing with gunshot wounds, puncture wounds, or slash type wounds, one of the major causes of death is not the injury itself, but the loss of blood. During the Vietnam War, for example, one in four soldiers died from hemorrhage, bleeding, or injuries that could have been prevented. In the war in Iraq, that dropped to only one in 10 soldiers. One of the main reasons for this is because the US military changed its tactics when dealing with battlefield injuries, especially injuries involving significant hemorrhaging. In the past, soldiers were often removed from the battlefield to be treated at a field hospital. Today, they're treated more likely on the spot, which significantly improves their chances of survival, especially when you're dealing with hemorrhaging wounds. Uh, and often today, it's the soldier himself who takes responsibility for his own wounds uh, through self-care and the use of an IFAC or an individual first aid kit. The Israeli or emergency bandage fits well into this philosophy. The Israeli bandage was created by a American born former combat medic in the IDF named Bernard Ben Natan. It was created around 1997 and it was adopted by the United States Army in 2001 when Robert Miller, who was a medic and a trainer for the 75th Ranger Regiment, took interest in the Israeli bandage, and he used it uh, on the battlefield in Afghanistan and then in Bosnia, and uh, he found that the bandage uh, helped to save lives. And in 2002, it became a standard in every Ranger IFAC. And uh, now uh, it's issued to the Navy SEALs, uh, the CIA use them, uh, so does the FBI, and a couple of other specialized military units. Some of the things that make the Israeli bandage so unique is that it has a built-in pad, a pressure bar, and also a closure bar, which also allows you to use the bandage as a makeshift tourniquet. Uh, aside from this, the, the bar also makes it a lot easier to bandage the bandage in various configurations that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. And uh, the closure bar at the end makes sure that the bandage won't slip once it's closed. The bandage is extremely versatile. It can be used to bandage wounds to extremities as well as to the head, the neck, and the torso. And you can use it as a makeshift tourniquet, as I said earlier. It can also be put on with one hand very easily. In a moment, I'm gonna demonstrate exactly how to stage the bandage and uh, it's a proper application to various different types of wounds. Now would be a great time to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Before I demonstrate the application of the Israeli bandage, I'd like to talk a little bit about staging the bandage in your first aid kit. When you first receive the bandage, it comes wrapped like this. There's an exterior wrapping and there's an interior wrapping, which I'll show you in a second. The exterior wrapping has some instructions on how to use the bandage and the interior wrapping is clear. Uh, also, the exterior wrapping has three tear points, one at the top and two at each corner. This is the four inch model. Uh, there's also a six inch model, uh, but I'm going to be using the four inch model for our demonstration today. So the way that you open it up is you simply tear open at any of the tear points and that will expose the interior packaging. The interior packaging is also wrapped. This is also sterile. So there's no reason to have the exterior packaging really inside your first aid kit. And by removing the exterior packaging in advance, you're going to save yourself a few seconds, which you know, might make a big difference. So now we're going to get to removal of the interior packaging and application of the bandage. Finally, I think it's important to mention that practice is extremely important when learning to apply this type of bandage or really any type of first aid. Uh, as you're probably aware, in an emergency, you will not rise to the occasion. You will sink to your lowest level of training 
And without practice, uh, you know, having emergency first aid gear is going to be useless because you won't be able to use it. So you can purchase a three pack of these bandages on Amazon for less than $20. Uh, you know, use one for practice. Uh, keep practicing opening and closing it, applying it to various different types of wounds or wounds on various different areas of the body. And that way you will be ready in case you need to employ one of these. So the Israeli comes uh, packaged with the exterior and interior packaging. Now we're going to open up the interior packaging, which you'll note has a couple of tear marks and, uh, and cuts, just like the exterior packaging does. We'll rip it right open. And when we open it up, we're going to have two sides and the pad in the middle. You can open it up without touching the pad. Now let's assume we're addressing a wound that's on the leg. So the first thing we would do is we would put the pad over the wound. Um, it says uh, on this side, you know, here's the emergency bandage, so it's this side out, right? So you put the pad over the wound and note that there are retaining stitches in the bandage, so it won't roll away. So if you drop this or if you're trying to work with both hands, this won't, you know, go rolling away and it'll still stay sterile. So we put the pad on the leg, we pass the bandage around, the retaining uh, stitches come out, and then once we go over this cleat in the middle, you put the, the fabric through, you reverse it, and then you pull it tight, and this puts 30 pounds of pressure directly on top of the wound. And then what you would do is you'd wrap, like any wound, you'd wrap both sides first to make sure that no debris or dirt or anything gets inside, and then you'd continue to wrap until you're finished. Now, if you need, at the end, by the way, there's the... Uh, there's the retaining clip or the, the closing clip, which I'll talk about in a second. This serves a dual purpose. Purpose number one is it works to close the bandage. So you hook it on and this is not going to go anywhere, right? It's not going to come, come apart. But more importantly, or, or as a second alternative, there's a second use for it. Let me just get this out because it's actually got these like little fish hook barbs in the bottom. There we go. Okay. If... You need to put more pressure. You can use this as a makeshift tourniquet by loosening uh, a little bit of the bandage, passing the, uh, actually you gotta twist it around first, sorry. Passing the retaining clip through, and then you can start to turn, turn, turn. And this will put additional, I'm not gonna turn anymore because our patient isn't actually bleeding. This will put additional pressure on the wound, and then you can just use the clip as intended to, uh, to seal it off. All right, that's one, one way to apply it. Okay, so here's another application of the, of the Israeli bandage, this time on the patient's arm. So let's assume for the moment that we are uh, putting the, the, uh, the bandage on the forearm. We would do it the same way as we did on the leg, pass through the cleat, reverse it, and that way you can build pressure. Now, in addition to that, if I wanna now use this to immobilize the arm, I would simply run this around the patient's neck, then back up, and then I would use the uh, closing clip to secure it. And then we're done. Our patient will now demonstrate the self-application of the Israeli bandage to a wound on her arm. The patient first opens up the bandage, places her wounded hand uh, through the loop at the small end of the bandage, while holding on to a portion of the fabric so that it doesn't turn, you then place the pad over the wound, which is on the forearm, keep twisting the bandage around, then through the cleat, and then reversing the bandage, pulling it tight, and then wrapping it around again. Wrapping both sides, and then continuing wrapping in the center until the wrapping is done. Uh, this is one of those times where if you have a bandage that hasn't been opened already, we're obviously using the same one over again. If you drop it, it won't fall down. Uh, once the wrapping is done, you secure it with the retaining bar and you're finished. Well, thank you very much for watching. We hope that you've enjoyed the video and you found it informative. If you haven't already done so, please like the video and subscribe to our channel and please leave all your questions and comments below. It helps the channel grow and we're very interested in your feedback. Until next time, Stay prepared, stay safe, God bless you, and God bless America.